So, darn that Dave. He, him and his $50 oscilloscopes video. You know, he seems to be able to find these things, but I never can. The closest I could find to a $50 oscilloscope was this thing. The closest thing that I could find to a $50 oscilloscope was this thing, which is an old beat up 22, 25, 50 megahertz, but with the, um, with the very, uh, very uh, high sensitivity. So I don't know. Let's see if this thing actually powers on and uh, what we get out of it. But uh, yeah, 50 bucks for uh, parts, for parts or repair. Let's just see what we get for our 50 bucks. Now, really, really I should open this up before I power it up, shouldn't I? Just to make sure that all kinds of crap isn't going to go crazy on me. Uh, what do you got? Got a screw there. Isn't the case just supposed to slip off of these things? Okay. So, what do we see on first glance? We see the picture tube. Watch out for that. That's high voltage. We've got a power supply coming in there. Let's pull the camera out. Got our power supply in there with a nice big filter cap that doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. Can't really see in there. This is the rest of the power supply over here with some, I don't know, some funkiness going on with one of the transistors. Probably the power transistor. There's some extra, I don't know if you can see it back there, but there's lots of heat sinking. Or not heat sinking, but um, there's one of those has been replaced anyways. So what do we have on the front here? Doesn't look like anything's too badly damaged up there. Just from a quick visual inspection. How do the knobs feel? Knobs don't feel too bad. Hmm. Well, I suppose we could plug it in, see what happens. What's the worst can go wrong? Just make sure that we have our safety squints on. See what we get. Well, we get a indication that there is power. Oh, look at that. There's a beam. kind of comes to focus. Look at that. Uh, okay. Well, channel B, channel A. Oh, look, it's got a, <laughs> it's got a, uh, it's got a beam. So let's throw probe on there 
and see if we get a signal of any sort. Look at that. Okay, so that's the square wave coming out of my 465. And um, it's supposed to be putting out 300 millivolts. So that should be three scale divisions. If I'm on one, two, oh, it's high. If I'm on 0.1 uh, volts per division. So that's not exactly 100% accurate. Now let's see if we hook up to our 3212. That's a one point two. So if we're on half a volt per division, we should be, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the Phillips 3212 seems to be doing pretty good. And what's it, um, what's it putting that out at? Uh, it doesn't say what the frequency is, but let's see what the internal uh, calibrator is putting out for probe compensation. Um, it says 500 millivolts peak to peak at one kilohertz. So, wow, that is really picky to get stabilized. So I wonder if there is some circuitry that we need to adjust so that stays a bit more stable. But that does look pretty darn close. Yeah, to... um. What do we have that on? Point 0.2. So a full cycle would be 2. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And it's 500 and point 0.5, so uh, it's reading a little strong, I think. So, yeah, I mean, it probably just needs some adjustments, and this thing will be good to go. So, okay. So maybe... 50 bucks you can pick up an oscilloscope and you're going to have to be doing some fits and futs and, and things like that with it in order to um to make it um make it really sing so there will be some cleaning of pots because these things just seem pretty crusty and I'm wondering if it's just parasitic um resistance in inside there but anyways we'll do some cleaning we'll do some cleaning and see what we get um but I, you know I did not need another oscilloscope but when 
somebody puts out the challenge, like, oh yeah, you can find these things really good oscilloscopes. Well, really good. You can find a you can find a used oscilloscope on eBay for fifty bucks, and if people say you can't, well, you know what? It's I have to pay fifty five dollars US for this. I probably could have offered them less. It was a um, uh, make an offer, and it was twenty bucks shipping. So I thought, you know, for a um, five hundred millivolt um, sensitivity oscilloscope, even if it only has fifty megahertz bandwidth. Um, what's the worst that can happen, to be honest? Well, yeah, see? It's starting to, um, it's starting to flake out a bit. It's starting to flicker, and I wonder what that's about. Maybe it's just warming up, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it's all of a sudden gotten much more stable. And can I... Position it left and right. Yeah, coarse and fine adjustment are seem to be working. Um, it got a little less bright, but yeah, the pots are super, super crusty. So we're gonna have to get those pots cleaned up for sure. But uh, yeah, it looks like uh, okay. So we're gonna uh, let's make sure we got both channels doing about the same thing. Uh, channel one. Uh, triggering off. Of, yeah, there it is. Look at that. I think it just needed time to warm up is what it needed. Now, that is definitely not 500 uh, millivolts peak to peak because that is set on... 0.2 volts so well maybe it is two and a half yeah um, maybe it doesn't even need very much calibration at all um, it just needs time to warm up so uh, I have to say that was worth the 50 bucks or so to get it into the house now to find room for it so um, there will probably be another video where I go through the whole thing tear it apart do some cleaning and um, make sure that, well, I have to figure out how I'm going to do these calibrations. Although I have a couple of multimeters that I can use as um, voltage sources or voltage measuring devices, which should have better spec than this guy. But yeah, looks like we've got a, uh, as they say, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thanks for watching.